I want to ask you a question, viewer. This is an image of the world. But what do you see? What do you feel? As I grow older, the only thing I feel is that I feel less strongly about the world than I did 10 years ago. My worldview color grades only to darker shades of gray as the years tick by. Beliefs, ideas, the certainty of right and wrong, they blend into a milkshake of distasteful unsureness. But the uncertainty isn't ignorance. It's not that I'm unsure of my thoughts on a particular subject over a lively dinner in the village, or that my head is foggy during a 3 p.m. debate about macroeconomics at work. These circumstances require thoughts, opinions that I unfold in my mind and hand out like business cards to everyone that's in the room. Sometimes acceptable opinions are like business cards, a necessary formality to inclusion. It's good to keep a few in the back pocket. No, instead, it is the feeling of chronic suspicion, a suspicion that my thoughts don't matter. Not really, but neither do the next persons. Gandhi says whatever you do may be insignificant, but that it's important you do it anyway. There's probably truth to that, but Gandhi was also a lawyer, and that sounds like a very lawyer way of trying to rationalize your actions. He's also dead. The world is like that sometimes. We run and scream, quarrel amongst ourselves, publish papers, debate problems, even go to war. Then, every hundred years, a finger is snapped, a toilet is flushed, and you and I and everyone who existed with us is wiped out, and a new fresh bundle of humans are set on this place to rationalize their existence. When you study a sufficient amount of history, contemporary problems cease to seem very immediate or pressing. There are always similar patterns in the past, precedents to guide decisions if you know where to find them, or precedents that will likely predict future outcomes of our current problems. When I was 18, a dear friend of mine died. It was like being pushed into a Ukrainian lake during winter. The force of shock crushed my chest to where I could barely breathe. The experience, if there is any honor in drawing moral lessons from the death of a human, and I'm not sure there is, was that it taught me the fragility of life. His existence was worth quite a lot, at least to me. And then the finger snapped, and the world went on.